So Michelle and June Ann, I'm going to throw this together quickly so at least you can get a little sense as to what this might look like. Ours will obviously be a little bit better in terms of production value and how we format it is going to be slightly different, although you'll see some of the consistencies. So this is a course that I teach each summer as an adjunct for Boise State University. It's called Blogging in the Classroom. Essentially, I teach the students excuse me, how to create um, blogs that they can use for educational purposes or in some cases as a professional um, web presence as well as looking at things that allow us to use our blogs a little bit better so um, what we call real simple syndication or RSS readers which allow you to read other people's blogs in a single location and microblogging, which most people know better as Twitter um, or some other form of, of communication where you're limited in terms of the characters, often by about 100 to 150, Twitter being 140, obviously. Um, so the way the course is set up, um, essentially, you know, I've got it here. This is last year's course, obviously. It's divided into individual weeks. Um, and this is how we'll set up ours. So you can see over here on the left-hand side, they go by dates. We would just have like a content area. And then under content, it would say week one, week two, week three, week four, and so on. So week one, very much like ours would be, is going to be a lot of background information. So what's kind of interesting, though, is the format looks pretty similar. So, for example, it starts off with an introductory video. Um, now, this is actually a little bit out of order compared to what I would normally have it done. Um, so for us, I would probably have a little bit of introductory text first. So you can see it introduces you to the course here. So it tells you a little bit about the course. It tells you a little bit about differences between message boards or discussion forums and web blogs. It teaches you a little bit about blogs. And then it goes through and tells you what the two readings are. And then it goes through and asks you to go and look at the next little bit of area. And then it will provide some tasks for you to do. Now, in our case, we won't provide tasks, but we will provide sort of this type of information you see up here. So it just sort of gives them a little context. Then we'll start off with the introductory video. Now, this introductory video I hosted here on um, YouTube. So this is actually just a YouTube video that's embedded into the learning management system and they use Moodle as you can see up here uh, we use Blackboard but if the students were to click on this it's a little long it's Hello, almost 10 minutes to week one but of as you can tech, see five, three, seven, in this particular case I'm glad I'll you're pause it for a sec um, it's basically a narrated PowerPoint, at least for the first little bit. You'll see I've actually got my picture up there so the students can get to know me and they you know, can be introduced to me. This after going through the syllabus and some of the introductory materials. Um, these introductory videos that I post for each of the weeks are just designed to give you sort of an overview of what it is that you're going to be working on in the coming week. Um, I'll be honest with you and say that the first couple of weeks of the course are a little slow getting started um, and that's largely in part because each of you are sort of entering the course at different points in time in terms of at least your ability. Of Let me skip through a little bit here to get into the content so for example uh, I'll so start here now with the reading for this particular week. Um, the first thing that I'll mention is that there are a series of readings that you're asked to do, three in particular. Uh, these readings, and in future weeks, I'll sort of go through and talk a little bit about each one. Um, this week, I just want to say that they're really just designed to give you a sense as to how blogging can be used in an educational context, specifically within a classroom context, uh, with a little bit of overview of just blogging in general. Um, one of the things that I'll be honest with you up front is that in many instances, the blogs that you are actually writing, at least the entries that you're writing on your blog, sorry, they aren't designed to be a direct reflection of the readings. Um, in most cases, the blog entries that I ask you to write will be totally void of any specific 
context to the readings. Uh, the readings are designed as sort of a parallel or a supplement idea to give you some of the sort of both practical and um, theoretical or research basis for how to think about and how to go about blogging and your actual blogging is more of the applied part of it. Um, so if you sort of look at it in terms of well I'd want to do I don't want to skip ahead a little bit here again now so to give you let's see what comes next let me get to the right spot stuff may already be familiar to you so the main task this week um, or I guess the big task this week is to create your actual blog. Now there are three main platforms. So you see here in this portion, what I'm doing there is advantages and disadvantages. I'm essentially giving them the tasks for the week. So I've sort of gone over the readings and what I think you know that they need to know before they read the readings. And now I'm giving them an overview of the rest of the week. So these are the tasks or the activities that I want them to complete throughout the week each and you'll see that the content that you've got within Moodle will provide you with some of the advantages and disadvantages of each of the tools at least from my perspective I've also got a number of links that I've put into the course that are designed to sort of um, allow you to get a sense as to how others compare these particular tools I'll be honest with you and say that personally I started off as a blogger person um, and that was actually before blogger was owned by Google and um, I eventually... I'll skip ahead here a bit now because I'm basically just giving some background on each of those three blogging platforms. What platform you're going to use and you've actually created your blog, there are really three things, three tasks, if you will, that I'd like you to do this week. Uh, the first is to create a page and your page is going to be your about me page where you're going to describe a little bit about yourself who you are you know why you're doing this that kind of thing and then you're just going to write an initial entry now for most of the blogging platforms when you start a blog there's going to be actually a initial entry that's already done for you and it's often called my first entry or my first post and it's just a templated one that's in there you want to delete that one first because it basically just says so and I continue to go through here the tasks that I want them to complete for this week and that takes me up to about blog right here about math and, and include those in your blog world so that's basically week one in a nutshell if you've got any questions uh, please you know contact me email me and let me know and um, you know as you go through you know this again this video is designed to give you sort of a, a, an overview of what's going to happen this week I'd also encourage you I think the last link for this week in Moodle is this weekly checklist which sort of gives you a list of the individual activities that you've got to complete and an approximate date on when, which I would like them do by uh, or I'd like them completed by so you want to use this video in conjunction with that particular checklist as a way of sort of guiding your activities for the next seven days so that's the introductory video and then the next thing that our students would get is they would get their readings so I've got three here obviously in our case uh, most of the weeks as you'll see from the handout that I sent you only have a single uh, reading there's a couple I think one maybe two that have two but they would just be embedded in here as PDFs so you see when I clicked on it you know it opened up into a, a new window you can set Moodle or Blackboard both of them up to open up in the window that you're in or in a new window it's entirely up to you uh, you can see here now my PDF is taking a little bit to load but you know here's a PDF of the first reading that they've got um, you know so in this case it's just a four page reading which is why I've got three of them in this particular week that they have to complete and our students would do that so after reading that little introductory blurb and then watching that introductory video m none of which with the exception of week one and week eight would be completed by me all of them would be completed by those individuals that I hope agree uh, to do those so the ones that are in parentheses in the handout um, and so once they've done the reading then they would come down to the tasks and this is where they would essentially get involved in two things the first and and I can't replicate them here because I don't have them 
Um, but the first would be to have a um, some kind of small writing thing, something that's you know a half page, maybe a page in length, um, but it's designed to get them thinking about what they just read in relation to one of the themes of or one of the claims of the CIT. Um, I will actually probably use the internal blogging function within Blackboard for them to complete that because that gets submitted to me but it is also publicly available to other students so we can use that as a way to encourage students to interact with each other. The second task that I would actually have them do and I haven't decided if this would be part of their blogging activity within Blackboard or if we would do this separate in the discussion forms but this is where we would try to replicate that discussion and one of the things that I'm going to be working with June Ann on in the fall semester, probably sometime in September, uh, weeks two or three or four, is we're actually going to get her class to do a discussion activity of one of the readings. At least I emailed her and asked her if we could do that. So that way I can go in and get a screenshot of an example of it. So in week one, when I'm providing what does the online seminar look like as opposed to a face-to-face -face seminar, I can actually, you know, have a sample from June and Ann's fall class that I can show them there. Now, one of the things this doesn't have, which ours will have, and I can show you what it might look like, um, and, and it'll, but there would be a concluding video that would come up following this. And the concluding video would be more along the lines of, let me see if I've got a good one here. Um, this kind of content, I think, would be along the lines of what I'd be looking for in the concluding video. And it would only be, you know, as I mentioned, probably about two or three minutes. And let's see if I can get a sample here of the kind of, it's By really the takeaways. Now, this week, as we move forward, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, particularly in terms of the readings. Um, now, the first reading, I'll be honest with you, Harsh, um, and I think that's how you pronounce it, Harsh, uh, 2003, is focused really upon blogging and blogging in the classroom. So that will kind of relate to it. And in all honesty, this, along with the three readings you did last week, will help you move towards that uh, blogging in the classroom, or that letter that you've got to write to your administrator uh, coming up in, in a little bit. Um, so, you know, that should help you with respect to that. Now, the next three readings actually are things that we're reading about now, and I, I include them at this point in the course because we're at the stage where I'm not requiring you to do specific types of blog entries, as we'll start to do. I think it's in week four, although maybe in week three. You'll see, actually, as we're coming up, um, but I believe it's in week four, but in most instances, these three readings tend to, you know, the Prensky and the McKenzie and the Reeves reading, tend to elicit a response from folks. One or more of those readings will sort of speak to you and ideally will give you something to talk about. Uh, and that's something that you could blog about if you want to differences and particularly the issue of digital natives will come into play at that stage. Okay, sorry, this is not the concluding video that I was, or not a good example of a concluding video, but um, I thought what I was going to do there was give a little bit of the takeaways. So for example, in these three bottom readings here that um, I assigned the students, the Prinsky article is basically a an opinion piece by this guy that talks about digital natives and how they are, um, you know, technology is pervasive in their lives and because of that the way in which they learn and the way in which they live is fundamentally different than you and I. Mackenzie is actually a direct rebuttal to this in, in a very sort of a tongue-in-cheek way because he goes through and picks apart all of the academic mistakes that Prensky makes from, you know, misquoting folks to making people up that don't exist to um, actually 
indicating that you know one author says this when he says the exact opposite and then Reeves is an academic piece that actually is a pretty good literature review of the issue of generational differences and it would be sort of that kind of discussion that I would end each week with which are sort of the takeaways you know these are the you know the two things that I'd like you to know about this reading that will help you with your understanding of what we've got next week or the week after now once the students have read or have you know watched the concluding video which as I mentioned today won't appear until noon on day seven of each week the last thing that they will have in each of the weeks will be this weekly checklist um, so what you'll see here is I actually break down each of the topics or each of the items that they have to do into to a list so the first thing they have to do is they've got to read a bunch of things um, in this case, they've got to read four articles, and I actually give due dates for them. Then they've got to create an RSS account, and I give a due date for it. They've got to add me and all of their fellow students' blogs to their RSS reader. Then they've got to go out and add some additional blogs to their RSS reader. Then they've got to create a Twitter account. Then they've got to send out a, they've got to post a tweet, essentially. Then in the discussion forum, they've got to post their Twitter username so that everyone else can actually follow them. Um, so you see how, you know, there's a list of things that they've got to do here in this weekly checklist. And I find this really useful in the online environment because, um, you know, while the videos, if they're good and short, and that's why I say that introductory one should be five to eight minutes and the concluding one should be sort of two or three minutes, um, the students will tend to watch that. If it's more than eight minutes or so, they tend to zone out. But this is really useful because most of the students that I have when I teach online, regardless if it's here or for any other institution, when I was at Wayne State or if I ever had the op or when I have the opportunity here at Sacred Heart, what I find is each week the first thing the students will do is go to this weekly checklist and they will actually print out everything that's here and then they'll just post it on their wall or post it next to their computer and they'll literally just go through and start checking off as they get things done and as I mentioned in that week one video some cases these are hard deadlines some cases they're just suggestions and depending upon the week and in that introductory video I would generally tell them if the you know which of these are hard deadlines so if you notice you know, most of these are suggestions for them to keep them moving forward. Whereas if I go further down into the course, and, you know, this is the third last week that we're working, you know, these at least from two to four, actually I guess two to six, because five and six are for the end of the week, because the week ends on the 20th of July. Those are hard deadlines. You know, so they need to post their blog entry by the 16th. They need to leave a comment on this on the instructor's blog by the 18th. They need to post an entry on the course blog by the 20th. Um, you know, and if you look at other weeks, they have similar ones like that. And in that introductory video, I would have told them that this is sort of the hard deadline for these particular items. So that's, like I say, a real quick and dirty overview of what this might look like. You know, it's not an exact copy uh, because, you know, the content isn't the same. So I've sort of done it a little bit differently with this course than what I plan to do with the seminar format. Um, but you get a good sense of it here. The other thing that, you know, I will mention is, you know, with the handout, all of those names that are mentioned in parentheses, right now they're just suggestions that June and I came up with. Um, so, you know, and, and while I suspect if June Ann and I were to ask these people, knowing most of the personalities there, even a little bit, um, what I know of them, I suspect that they would agree to these kinds of things. But, um, you know, if they don't, we, you know, we have, well, I shouldn't say we have backup plans right now, but we would look at approaching other people for this. Um, you know, one of the advantages of the online environment, and I think one of the strengths of being able to do this seminar in the online format, is that, you know, it's not contingent upon one instructor. Um, you know, if I was teaching this particular seminar in a face-to-face -face format, you know, what I do from week one to week two to week three is all me. 
Um, you know, while I can bring in other resources and stuff like that, it's not a planned experience where they're going to experience faculty members from a variety of disciplines um, that, you know, are, are talking about essentially things that they're, you know, incredibly passionate about. So I think those kinds of things um, really will make this course a, a powerful learning experience for the students. And in all honesty, the resources that we create for this course, I think, will be something that many of the uh, seminar instructors would like to use or would be uh, interested in using in their own courses. So that's about it for me tonight. I will see you both in the morning.